In this video, I'm going through one of the questions posed by Kelvin's audience when discussed about the dividends, whether it is irrelevant or whether it's irrelevant. So I think the questions was posted on related to this video uh, by Kelvin. So if you're interested to watch the video, you can uh, check out the link in the descriptions. I just worked out an Excel sheet, two different perfect cases as follow. Case one, you own a company that generates you 100K a year, every year and pays you 100K in dividends yearly. The value of the company is 10 million and doesn't change since it generates and give up 100k yearly. Case 2, you own a company with market cap of 10 million. It doesn't issue dividends but grows in value at exactly 100k each year. You sell stock equivalent to 100k each year to fund your lifestyle. You find that in case 1, you get 100k indefinitely, meaning that you get the money forever. But in case 2, you eventually end up selling your stock after 171 years based on my Excel sheets calculations. So did I do something wrong or are dividend paying stocks better in that sense that the payout may go on forever? So I find these questions very interesting because in both cases, it is really an apple to apple comparisons. In both cases, the company generate 100K. In case one, you take out the 100K every year, it becomes like an indefinite uh, kind of payout. So basically that money lasts you forever. But according to these persons, the spreadsheet says that you will run out at 171 years. So we know that this definitely cannot be right because they are generating the same amount of money by right, they will last the same. So let's go into the details on both cases. So in case one, as mentioned, it's $10 million company, generate 100K, and then you pay the dividends 100K every year, take out 100K, because the company generate 100K and then pay out 100K, so you will left up with 10 million. So you reset, right? Every year go through the same and the same again. Basically, that is the money printing machines that last you forever. Okay, now let's go to case two. Case two, instead of the company paying dividends, the 100K will be reinvested back to the company because the company is not paying out, right? So you as the investor, you have to sell your shares and then use the shares to fund your lifestyle. And hopefully that money also lasts you forever. But according to the spreadsheet, it is saying no. So let's get into the detail of the spreadsheet. So this is a spreadsheet created by the audience. Okay, let's look at the formula, right? So it says that the company is worth $10 million. The share price is 100,000. And then basically just from the first year, you want to generate 100K every year, right? So the company generate 100K and you want to take a 100K. So in first year, you have to sell one shares and that's get you 100k right so you were left with 99 shares and then second year the company will go up 100k in value as mentioned right and then the share price is just the 10.1 million divided by 100 and then you get 101 thousand dollars so you can see that the share price also increased over time right because the company you didn't take out the company stay invested in the companies and then the second year how many shares that you need to sell is basically just take back the hundred thousands and then divided by 101 thousands uh, basically you need to sell 0.9 901 shares and then you were left with 98 shares uh, after the second year. So if you just follow this formula towards the end, right, you will notice that by 171 years around here, you basically run out of shares, meaning that this money doesn't last you forever. So the question is, where's the mistake, right? I think that's the interesting part. Okay, so here's the answer. There are two errors that I found that caused these situations to occur. You need to fix both of those. So we need to take a step back, right? Go back to step two here. So if you look at the situations, right? It's like 10 million worth of company generate 100K and then it is not paying dividend, right? Of course, the company will go up 100K. By the second year, it is worth $10.1 million. That's the correct answer. But the question is, if this continue for another year, do you think that the company can will only go up by 100,000? Because... If we take a step back and look at these numbers, right? Actually, the 100K versus the 10 millions, right? It is implying that the company is earning 1% per year. If it goes up by 1% per year, the first year, 10 million become 10.1 million. That's the correct number. But the second year, it shouldn't just go up by 100K because now the company, you have the 10.1 million inside there. So you actually need to compound it. Basically, take the 10.1 million, multiply by 1.01 to get the correct share price. So that's the first thing. So if we go, that, go back to the spreadsheet, right? Uh, if I open up. So this is the spreadsheet uh, correction that I have made. So you see the calculations here for, for share price is very simple because it go up by 100,000. So here it's just like from 100,000 become 101,000, 102,000. This is this growth, right? Doesn't imply a 1% growth rate. It's actually lower than 1%. Uh, only the first year is 1%. Second year onwards is less than 1%. So if you go to the my corrected spreadsheet here, you see that the formula is very simple. You just take the previous period and then you just multiply by one plus one percent, which is implied by the questions being said here. So that's the first correction that I did. But after you make these corrections, right, you'll notice that the number of shares, right, it still continue to come down. So you see, 
going down and still you will at some point you will have zero shares left so also not correct right so where's the second mistake the second mistake is actually the original number of shares because go back to this case right in the case one if you have 10 million first you generate the 100k first and then you pay out so by the end of it you should have left with 10 million right then it can repeat again right but now come back to these uh, calculations here the original calculations is assuming that before you generate that one percent you already sell one shares, meaning that the deductions of that one shares doesn't happen end of the year, but it happened beginning of the year. If that's the case, from the start, you already lose some money already. That's why it's not enough. So to make that corrections, right, actually what you need to do instead of this just 100 shares, right, you need to start from 101 shares. So we, we start with 101, so that just T, T0 times 0, you deduct one shares, you left with 100 shares, and then you can continue these calculations and you can see that the correction will be the correct one. So you see, this is my end of year one period. So instead of like left with 99 shares, I assume that I start with 101 shares. So after deducting one shares, right, you were left with 100 shares. And then the market value of those 100 shares, right, is actually just take the 100,000, the 100 shares multiplied by 100,000. And then the second year, basically you just take the 100,000 and then you divide it by 100 and 1,000 to calculate the number of shares to sell. This is the same as the formula uh, given. And then uh, you can calculate the remaining shares, right, which is the 100 shares minus the 0 0.9901 and then you get the correct uh, number of shares left. And then if you just take the this number of shares left, right, multiply the share price, you get back the 10 million again. So, and then you, you just continue this on the third year, right? The share price is now $102,010. And then you just repeat again, you will notice that by end of the period, right, you will still get back 10 million. I think basically that's the answer. There are two errors here that you need to correct. The first one is the share price so that both are implying a 1% growth rate. If not, right, you are essentially saying that the 100,000 that you did didn't collect as a dividend, stay with the company, but continue to earn nothing on it, right? That, that is not fair. We, we should assume that they are all earning the same rate of return. Second thing is that because of the issues of beginning of period and end of period, is either you correct this, meaning that you assume there's a 101 shares from the beginning, then it will work out. Or you have to assume that the first year, right, you don't do the deductions uh, beforehand. You have to let the, the share price grow first, then only you do, do the 100K deductions end of the period. So that also will work. So by that, I have summarized these uh, calculations where's the error and hopefully you enjoy this video and thumbs up if you like it. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.